it is it's and you have um I haven't been in Ohio obviously you have Cedar Point which was like close to Cleveland and um I just never went so yeah, we have uh, Kings Island too, which is pretty close by. So where's that? By it's you? like north of Cincinnati. Yeah, a little bit north of Cincinnati. It's is huge. It six, is it Six Flags? It's not Six Flags. Um, Paramount used to own them. They're just kind of their own thing now. But okay. they have their yeah. It's it's about the size of Cedar Point, I would say. Okay. So, oh, yeah, we have them all over, but I'm just too old. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. Yahui, I don't think I knew there was a Disney in Shanghai. Yeah, it's quite big and a uh, lot of people usually, no matter in what? weekend or, or, or weekdays. Do you go? Have you been? Yeah, I've been, been there before. Do you go on the rides? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I'd, I'd be curious to see what Disney in Shanghai is like compared to Disney in Los Angeles. You know, do you have popcorn? And cotton candy. Yeah. Okay. I my, my kids like that. Okay. <laughs> All kids like that. <laughs> the universal okay. treat. Yes. Yeah. My my the just the, the uh, fantastic thing is um uh, in the night during the night it's a fireworks show. Yeah. It's an really amazing thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't. I yeah. Maybe I'll check that out next time I'm in Shanghai. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So we, I think here's the agenda and obviously add things that you would like to the agenda. Um, I would say that we, you know, for the folks on this call, after we did the Compass overview, I think two weeks ago, we presented it at the OSPO metrics working group meeting. Uh, and I, I think it went really well. Um, it actually helped me kind of understand how Compass works and how things are presented. So presenting it, I think, went well. There were a couple of questions that kind of came from that. And you, who are you already addressed those? Those are the mm -hmm. questions that I put in the in Slack. Uh, so I, I think it was interesting because I think a number of people had immediate interest. And those questions to me kind of indicate, like, yes, I would like to use this. <laughs> Here are some things that I would like specifically for my organization. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions, Yuhui, about the presentation. I think Victor was there. Yeah, yeah actually, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to release this feature to support people who would like to group up their mm -hmm. interested uh, communities or projects uh, into their own account. So this feature would be released two, two weeks later. And uh, we're going to you know, as you know, you may know, not known that um, there is one big summit in Shanghai held in the two weeks later called mm -hmm. uh, Global Open Source Technical Conference (GOTC) meeting, and uh, we have a, uh, a, a half day session specifically for OSS Compass, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I would like to use this chance to introduce Scale's metrics model and how to deploy it in Compass. Yep. So I would like to invite you or Elizabeth to help us to record me, record a video, maybe uh, six or seven mi uh, minutes to introduce the chaos metrics or metrics model. Yeah. And uh, we would like to more people to have an interest on, on our chaos uh, collaborations work. Yeah, I, Elizabeth yeah. and I can coordinate that for sure. When do you want it by? uh maybe next week okay yeah that's fine like seven days we can we can probably do it this week or next week yeah, so thank you very maybe much. elizabeth i was thinking maybe you and i could do it together we could do like a joint presentation I know. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> yeah okay no that sounds that's not a problem you um, okay thank you so much yeah you bet so i think yeah, I, Oh, go ahead. And uh, and also, I I would like to know that uh, what kind of support uh, required from the OSPO working group that uh, to continue to um, like uh, metrics model validation and and uh, 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 using the compass. Any mm -hmm. more suggestions or? Yeah, so and, I, uh, I yeah. do have some thoughts there. So um, 
and this is kind of just like my own personal thoughts, but I, I think that the presentation that we did on um, just a week ago was a really great just kind of introduction. People had not seen the tool before, you know what I mean? So they just needed to kind of get an understanding of what it was about and mm -hmm. what it looked like and how to interact with it. Mm -hmm. I think what, what will be um, important over the next couple, like over the summer, you know, kind of in the, in the short term future is as we have metrics models being able to actually show them. Mm -hmm. so I, I think the, the first presentation was less about people thinking strategically. It was probably mm -hmm. more about people just being introduced to what might be available to them. Exactly. Yeah. My suggestion is that over the course of the next several meetings, we can start to show um, we can really start to, to show answers to questions that people might have. And mm -hmm. that's what I think people will start thinking strategically would be my guess. Yeah. 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 As, as I, after, after that meeting, actually, um, uh, our, our, our team member from, from Compass, uh, called uh, Sheng Xiang. Yeah. He, he, he's also here called here is a norm normal coder yeah okay. he, he's a, his name and uh, he turned that meeting and uh, he told us that um, the guys from the meeting have quite a lot of interest on on our compass service and uh, we have made some decision after meeting that we should give the full support on the on the chaos uh, metrics model deployment and validation okay. so so from nowadays we actually start discussing on uh, as as we demo on the slides, we are preparing the uh, metrics already defined in chaos to be deployable on on, on compass okay. to make it uh, you, you know uh, um, compostable uh, in compose uh, in compass and easily to to compose as a new metrics model during the discussion. Perfect. I mean, I, yes, I think the the. The interest was certainly there, so there were there was good questions. I think the one thing that and it, this came from the questions that I posted to you, Yuhui. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like some of the questions they they were largely about how people can bring together repositories in ways that are meaningful to them. You know, and, and this is the what you're working on, I think, in two weeks. But how can an OSPO kind of create a collection of repositories to understand? a particular project, or how can they bring together repositories to understand a particular section of an ecosystem? You know what I mean? Like, how do they, I think that seemed to be one of the biggest takeaways for me on the questions. Yeah, mm, that's, that's a really good question. And uh, and uh, we, uh, in the next few weeks, or maybe two weeks later, during the G GOTC summit, yeah. uh, we will launch out a new feature to see people who uh, uh, log on, log, log in mm -hmm. our Compass service, yep. and uh, we would provide a subscription service for you. You can subscribe the project or repositories you interest on okay. into your own account. And uh, once this repository have any update uh, weekly, normally, you will got notification that uh, uh, you are you are interested. Repositories okay. or repositories or projects have new update info. Okay. So, yeah. Is that a push notification? Would it? Like yes, through the through the mail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, just as a as a note, when you talked about notifications, Sean and I had talked about push notifications through Slack. Uh huh. Yeah. For Augur a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um. And. Um, so it was a push notification. We had talked about push notifications for updates and push mm -hmm. notifications for some standard deviation change. Mm -hmm. So like if there was a two standard deviation change on a particular metric or metric model, mm -hmm. you might want to alert people. Like something has uh -huh. changed really dramatically. It's just a, something we had talked about when you're talking about notifications. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so as as I mentioned uh, in the last metrics model meeting, we uh, I mentioned we will we will provide some special count uh, for chaos members 
to mm -hmm. to easily to uh, create a new matrix model uh, with a more data sites. That's our pro promise. That's yeah. one thing. And and about notification. So we would like to more people have an interest on the chaos matrix model creation and and also using the compass service. So that's why we eagerly uh, eagerly to create such account service. Okay. So which means we can we can know who are interested in our chaos metrics model and compass service. Yep. And we would provide more specific service or not uh, or focus on those group of people. Okay. So, yeah. So in terms of that, I was thinking about in terms of chaos folks who could submit a metric model to be tested, we probably want to keep that pretty tight. I was thinking maybe just a few people. I don't know who you were thinking, but Elizabeth perhaps could submit a metric model. Um, maybe me. Mm -hmm. And then we have, we're going to be hiring, we've told you, a director of data science mm -hmm. this summer, and probably that person. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. But maybe just two or three people because it doesn't look like the submission of a metric model is that difficult mm -hmm. so yeah and also if you would like to more data size to be verified before you know uh create a new metrics model yeah well, we can provide such service for 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 the people pro, uh, from from your side uh, yeah like this yeah data scientist yeah, exactly. And if we just have a couple people, and I'm trying to think of the people who probably mm -hmm. would attend this this meeting as well, and that would mm -hmm. most consistently cool. be Elizabeth, myself, cool. probably the director yeah. of the science. That's great. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Any other kind of comments or questions on that? I know yeah, hi, yes, yeah, Victor. I I joined the call last week. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good presentation so that's interesting uh, one comment i have is uh, yeah this uh, to be able to quantify the the the, oh, the um is, is very very useful uh, one thing i find is for example uh, i just i'm posting uh, one of the uh, google's uh, dora uh, devops report um a lot of details so there's also a lot of effort to define so called maturity model for different community different product projects so the problem for all this effort is um, it's just the detail, right? How to quantify this and how to quantify the different level of maturity. So I know this isn't just about the, the uh, chaos specific matrix, but I think this is actually useful for any uh, open source related projects to define the, you know, the, the details, what needs to be done, and then eventually summarize it into something that uh, you know, upper management can use uh, as kind of maturity model matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, Dora, a deep dive into security. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Google's um, DevOps report. Uh, this, this year is about security, so it's not just about security. It's about uh, yeah. You, there's a report every year, and I go into a lot of uh -huh. details. Uh, I think the 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 original. Um, uh, author of this uh, report emphasized that just the complexity of the of the DevOps landscape. Uh, sometimes it's just so diversified based on the different you know business model versus technology landscape. So it's really hard to define that maturity model based on the uh, it depend on what you know. For example, uh, if you're using open source a lot, that, that you have a, a probably a kind of a like a maturity model. If you have um, like using mainframe. Or, or using like something that's new. So, so for example, um, uh, in the um, uh, IoT edge um, landscape, there's um, WebAssembly is becoming popular, right? So, so uh, at least at this point, some say that WebAssembly can be monolith instead of microservices. So the, the, the just using one uh, technology um, maturity model to define you know, what was the right approach and what is mature is really hard. So yeah, so I guess I just there's a lot of background to it. I'm also still new to this area, but I think to be able to quantify 
um, the open source community and what's the right thing to matter and is this something that's beneficial to the to the business model um yeah it's very valuable that's why i think yeah i think the, the, the compass is matrix is interesting mm -hmm. okay i i uh, because this is my first time to looking through the, this uh, paper or, or or i don't know this this is the kind of report uh, of the last year from Google. So uh, I, I need a little bit of time to go through the whole content. Uh, maybe we can discuss a little bit later after the meeting, but maybe might or, or uh, you, know, is, you, you may have some ideas about this part. Yeah, it is interesting. I'm already on the Compass Slack workspace, so you can find me there. I'll get right. there. Sure, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So Victor, I did have a comment on that. Um, if I understand you right, it's it's about thinking about metrics models or metrics in a slightly more refined way where we consider the different sectors that may be in front of us, um, as well as the different states that people might be in those different sectors. And then um, what metrics might be important kind of in those different cells and then how to move forward. Yeah, so so it, it all comes from a different perspective, right? So I, my understanding, because I'm last week's uh, Compass meeting is my first meeting. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I, definitely, uh, so I, I will say I know exactly what um, uh, the, 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 the chaos um, community is focusing on. My understanding from reading and, and listening just to the last week's meeting, it seems that it's more about community health, how to make open source successful, right? That's the goal for the for the community. Um, so every project, every community have a different perspective. For example, um, like uh, open source community typically is based on a project or at least a group of projects. So those com community typically focus on how to make that project or products uh, or group of products successful, but being adopted. And this one, um, the Google DevOps <clears throat> more focus on how to for for, for uh, organizations to adopt the DevOps methodology to like uh, make things more uh, uh, yeah basically DevOps <laughs> that's the keyword there. So those two uh, and open source community uh, health that's all kind of interrelated but not exactly. So I'm just saying yeah that, but but the problem for most um, community is is there's no. Uh, Good matrix. Everything is based on in what if, right? What what do you have, and what's the goal? And for example, for uh, big cloud providers, um, you know, in US will be you know the big three: Amazon, AWS, uh, or Amazon, uh, Google, and Microsoft. You know, China might be Alibaba and all that. So those community, those companies may have their own interests and and you know what health means for them, like market share. But for the overall community, it means how to um, you know leverage open source and you know not be if a company take take the uh, products uh, out of the market like that's what I sent to you. If a company take the, the the open source market out of out of the market and become closed source, and uh, yeah, what what happens? Right, what company can do to to uh, in case um, like the open source company do that and still be able to use that open source uh, project. Uh, so yeah, so all, all kind of related. It's the, um, yeah, I won't say I have a deep understanding. I just find it's interesting. I believe uh, quantification, like matrix, is important. So I, that's a. I really like this comment. And uh, one of the things over the years that chaos has done is, as we've developed metrics and metrics model, models, we've kind of been agnostic as to where and how they would be deployed. We basically just said, here are some interesting models you whomever you might be use them in in a in a way that is appropriate for you and we we kind of would just leave the metrics and metrics models up to folks to deploy in their own context when this this summer we're going to be hiring a director of data science and we're trying to move off of that agnostic role and say you know here are the metrics if you are in this in this industry or if you are thinking about these particular things, here are the metrics that you should be looking at. And here's possibly some um, predictive models that these metrics might help you tell a story about. So I, I think this ties in well, particularly as we think about different industries and different maturity levels within those industries um, to kind of sort out 
which things might be most useful in different cells. So I, I like this. And I think it ties in well with what we're about ready to do starting this summer to get a little a little less agnostic on the metrics and metrics models. But uh, I'm kind of uh, actually I I go quickly go through the the whole uh, report yeah. on this. Uh, I uh, there are something like uh, provide some key metrics like a deployment frequency, the time for changes. Um, so how to, uh, Victor, do you mean that uh, you would like to uh, m contribute those or those metrics into the chaos or integrate those metrics as a, as a metrics model uh, stand from the sec DevOps security point of view? Oh, no, I'm not a deep up. I'm more from a user perspective, right? If, if the matrix uh, uh, model can really, uh, because that that, that that model and your the, the DevOps uh, model is different mm -hmm. from the, the Compass model. But I think mm -hmm. it, it, a lot of the information in the DevOps model, the matrix can be incorporated into the Compass model. And, mm -hmm. and this way it has uh, enough information. So. Um, if in the future the the compass the, the compass um, not compass the, the um, chaos, uh, chaos yeah. community yeah, yeah member uh, like to use the data in the model to do some uh, um, analysis right just uh, to to determine whether uh, a corporation or a project is healthy and whether it's growing uh, according to the you know the best practices and all that and it has that matrix so I'm I, I'm just pointing to that and uh, I mean I have some discussion about it within the community I'm involved in. Um, yeah, like, I mean, if, if that's helpful, I definitely, you know, we'll, we'll be glad to contribute, but I'm, yeah, I'm more of coming from a user perspective. It would be nice to have those information in your model. What were they, the Yahoo? Where were those models? Just in here somewhere? I, I'm not sure. Uh... Yeah. Uh, this one, the, the Dora DevOps report, uh, it goes into a lot of details, go into a lot of the specific areas. But one mm -hmm. thing, uh, if you actually listen to the talk, they refrain from actually calling it a maturity model because they, their uh, position on this, this is very complicated, right? So it's a very business specific and uh, technology specific. So they don't try to get to the maturity model. And that's the hard part. I mean, that's, that's what, probably where being able to quantify it in the compass model might be able to actually define a better maturity model. I'll take a look at this kind of like you, you, we can. Yeah. Um, I, I'm interested in how these things might relate because it's almost looking at it as a, a I mean, Dora is founded on highly functional organizations that are more profitable, right? Where the most profitable uh, organizations are put at the top end of um, what highly functional means. Um, and so if we're talking about a, a open source project, it might not be necessarily the same output that you're looking at. So you'd have to rethink what the success metrics that fuel the highly functional, medium functional, and low functional organizations are, right? I think that's fair. I Listening to this conversation to Gary, I had just come across a paper um, that took, to your comment, that took the Do some of the DORA metrics and applied them to open source. And they talked about kind of what they needed to do to take them. Yeah out of industry, like what you're talking about and apply them in an open source context. So let me revisit that as well. Yeah, because I, I would I would think that one of the most successful open source project is Kubernetes, but would you say that Kubernetes is easy to roll back failing changes? What is a failing change to Kubernetes? Is it that clusters start crashing? Like that's a, it's a, it's a big question. Yes, let me, let me track that down. I, maybe I shared it in the Slack too, but it was actually, I think failing change was one of them, one of the ones that they had talked about as to what that looks like kind of within a company versus within an open source project and how they operationalized it um, for an open source project. Very cool. I have to find a paper. 
But actually, it makes me thinking that our currently metrics and metrics model focus more more focus on the operational or governance metrics. Um, we may a little bit refer to the software artifact, but not a lot. But what I can say from current uh, uh, the metrics from this from this report, it's more related to the like some uh, software artifact performance. Or, or, or some specific relate to the product per se, not the community. So maybe that's that's something we, we may uh, need some focus in the future. Just on the artifacts themselves? Yep. Okay. Possibly, yep. My, my, my understanding uh, is the, 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 the the scope for the DevOps report, because every company is a software company now, right? So, so if, a, if a company adopts open source software, it's no longer just about using it, you know, uh, running it operation, but also um, need to develop. Like a lot of companies, um, you know, after getting an open source project in-house, uh, started to contribute to back to the open source community so that the DevOps, um, the process, the, the concept uh, applies to pretty much any company that that use open source software eventually, I guess. <laughs> right, this is good. Um, thanks for the, the comments from Yahui around Compass and Victor, thanks for um, kind of pushing this conversation as well. I think it gives us some things to think about prior to the, to the next meeting. So cool. Um, any other comments on on this conversation. Really do appreciate it. All right. Um, let's see, I did like just a few kind of small things. So I just wanted to point out that in our spreadsheet where we track metrics and metrics models, um, there has been some initial work that's starting to track the different metrics, the relationship between metrics and metrics models. See what I'm saying? Like what metrics are in each of the mm -hmm. metrics models. So I think this might be kind of an interesting exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Just to see if if uh, if there's one metric that continues to show up or if there's certain metrics that never show up in a model. I just I think tracking this could be quite interesting. So um, more uh, to come. Uh, yeah. I have one quick quick question that uh, are we are we at least all the metrics we have in the in the in the first column um this no, no. This, at the moment this isn't a full list because we have 80 like 80 uh -huh. something so i'll fill this is brand new so i'll, I'll continue to fill this out and just mm -hmm. i think the mapping would be quite interesting okay we might consider also adding these to the pages as maybe keywords or something as well so that if you're on the website you could see like a keyword for the metric or a keyword for the model well, maybe both. I don't know. Yeah. So that they're tied together on the website, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, I think this is partly what this is. Like, where's our, where are our connections? Okay. Um, not sure if you have any comments, any other comments on that, but I really uh, do. Actually, I would like to collaborate. Uh, with you uh, working on this, uh, working on this sheet, because because uh, as I mentioned, I would like to deploy the, all the metrics uh, in the Compass as as part of work in, in Metrics Model Lab, uh, Compass Lab. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I would like to list all the possibly deployable uh, metrics and show uh, how it's going, how how it's going, maybe in another column to let guys know that what's the progress in the compass lab is it de deployed already or or, or in, in progress of the uh, implementation yeah, we could do that i mean we have we're, we're also just we have a sheet here like we're doing kind of this is a little bit better developed but we're just doing a pure metrics audit we're just trying to clean up our metrics in general and we can do something similar um as Elizabeth knows, I kind of like spreadsheets and making them look nice. <laughs> so I'll, uh, yes, I'll start organizing this uh, and I can certainly add a column like, you know, has this been deployed? 
kind of thing. Okay. Yes, it was Jen, Jen who's on here. So, <laughs> so thank you, Jen, for putting this together. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, I loved it. <laughs> it was a great thing. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't done this sooner. I'll be real honest with you. Yeah. I just, it seems like a, a thing that we should have done right at the start. And we'd always just kind of done the mapping in our heads. Um, so one of the things that I'm like super interested in is like the like contributors as an example is a is a metric that's showing up as a really powerful metric, at least in a variety of our metrics models, which to me is very interesting. And then it, it would also be interesting if, you know, we like Yahui and Jen help to um, adding all the rest of the metrics. And we see that there's conversations about people always wanting a particular metric. And we find that it doesn't show up in any model. It's never part of, <laughs> and we might say, you know, you might want to think about what that metric really means to you. So mm -hmm. I just, I love this altogether. So awesome. Maybe I, I think if we want to continue to keep this strategy is more uh, newest, uh, maybe we could uh, create a script to build this. I, I think if we want to keep the most uh, metric and metric module more newest, we have to like build a build a some uh script to build this like some yaml document or some something like that yep. maybe yep. yeah i agree anything we could automate that doesn't require <laughs> manual <laughs> manual <laughs> work is better <laughs> Actually, sometimes I, I would like to manual work because they, it pushed me to read all the content. It does, the that, is, that is true. <laughs> but is yeah, true. Junior, I, I like your idea. You... <laughs> okay, this, this whole thing has been very manual no, no. and it's made me learn a lot about the metrics. <laughs> be honest with you. Particularly some of the metrics that are like six years old. <laughs> go back and I'm That's like, true. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that needs to be updated. All right, cool. All right, great. It's really helpful. It's really helpful. Perfect. Thank you, June. Um, so I just I wanted to just point out we are Elizabeth. I know you're on this, but on the greens we're going to be adding the short identifiers. So right now for all of our metrics, we're done. So we're you know how like at the top, the top URL, WordPress also just produces a short identifier that we think is a little bit better to use. So like if compass, this is mostly like if compass is going to be pointing to a metric mm -hmm. model, we'll get that short identifier in there. And then nothing, nothing should change on that identifier, even if the name changes ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to let you know on that. Yeah. And they'll just, they'll look like that like this column here. Um, and I think we have them all. Elizabeth, do they have to be created or? No, they're in WordPress. I just need to pull them out. Okay. So that's on me. I'll probably, I'll get that done in the next few days for sure. Right on. Oh my goodness. Okay. See, Google's trying to help me from getting it action items by forcing me <laughs> by to not allowing me to it. type <laughs> <laughs> they're like no don't give that to me <laughs> uh, all right there i think i got it okay um let's see i did we don't have a ton of time we have 12 minutes left i did want to just continue to talk about this is a, a metric model that i think shoya was going to take a look at and i was wondering if shoya was on the call today and she is not um, so this is one that has come up in the, the um, OSPO working group 
just in terms of kind of from two directions. One is trying to understand the organizational influence that um, that a company has or the influence that a company has on an open source project. And is that growing? Is that of one or two um, companies? You know, how do we understand influence? So mm -hmm. I think part of the user story is if I would like to participate, if my company would like to participate in um, an open source project, and I see that, you know, 90% of the PRs and commits are from two companies that could tell you a story a little bit. <laughs> it may mm -hmm. be a little difficult to get um, your your PRs accepted, particularly if you're trying to work in the upstream and you want to do this strategically. Um, there was another kind of the, the other side was something that Sophia had brought up from Google that as a company wants to release IP into open source, you want to what might start as Google, for example, being, you know, 99% of the, the contributions to a project, you want to see those numbers go down as you're creating community over time. Um, so I think influence is something important. I'm I'm hope I am hoping we can continue to move this forward. I think one of the arguments here is that there were kind of two different types of influence in here. There was company influence and there was personal influence, if I recall, and those probably need to be split out. I know that they're probably pretty similar, um, but nonetheless, I think the suggestion was to split those out. Um, so I, I think I'll I'll reach out to Shoya and just kind of help. Okay. Um, I did want to just as as also you know, point out that we do have a couple of metrics models that are in this this in progress state, these yellow lines here. And I just, I wanted to see uh, where we're at. With some I of think these. I post one more uh, called the community activity and uh, that model. I'm not sure it's listed here. Yeah, I see it. It's under community on line 14. Uh-huh. Uh, no, not not community activity. It's organization activity. Oh, sorry. Uh, Is it not? Did we not get it in here? I post down the mom before. Uh, let me check. <clears throat> yeah, I found that. Okay, so it's not in here. Mm. Yeah, I post on the channel. Okay, I got it. So did this just not make it in? Oh, I guess I, okay, sorry, I missed that. Okay, let me get this. Okay, sorry about that, Yohui. Yeah, no, that's one because I saw your comments, and mm -hmm. and uh, we haven't yet decided its name because currently we call it uh, community activity, but uh, maybe we have some new ideas. Okay. Do you, I'm sorry, do you remember where we're at with this? Oh, sorry, what, what? Do you remember where we're at with this model? Thanks, Victor.
Well, this is okay. So is this okay? We have like three things in here. <laughs> yeah, because in in Compass we already deploy this model. Mm -hmm. We call it organization activity. Okay. But um, yeah, you if you if you think organization activity is good, and we can keep it at the same. Is the premise based on what I was just talking about, like with influence? Just that I want to understand. Uh, uh, actually, it's four metrics coming from uh, the the metrics I list here from the chaos metrics. One is organizational influence. The other one is from organizational diversity. Okay. Yes. Yep. But there is no uh, uh, clear definition of um, exist definition for 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 these two uh, for these four metrics. So I only list uh, the most relevant uh, metrics here. Okay. Hmm? What's the what is as this was put into Compass? What was the reason for creating this? Not like I'm questioning you i just like just to help yeah me. because i want to um, i want to check the the organization involvement in in the community uh stand from the diversity and also the commercial organizations influence in one community because as you know that in in the recent 10 or five years more and more commercial company has started uh, you know no matter initialize the new community or 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 such the engage into the exist the, the communities. Okay. So I would like to say there they show up in one community and what's the impact on that's no matter uh, in a good way or bad. Mm -hmm. And also uh, what's the, the biggest the impact uh, would happen if one of the uh, company or, or organization leave this community especially he's announced that that uh, he is a leading he he played the leadership in one community if this come if this company leave this community okay. that would not a good thing we do have this the elephant factor metric it's actually more or less the same yeah okay so is the reason that you care about this, is it is it these things to demonstrate an ability to contribute that, that may be yeah. hindered? For example, there's two similar communities in one uh, technical areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, if one if one if some uh, com companies draw join the uh, in one communities. But sometimes suddenly, these uh, companies leave this uh, leave this community A, and uh, they all in community B, which means, you know, uh, this is some we can call it result of the competitive result mm -hmm. of the ecosystem. So is it like if there are two two companies that are or I'm sorry, two projects that are similar in an area. If I see more organizational activity in one, that would maybe indicate that's probably the community that's gaining momentum. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We can call it the competition between these two com communities. Okay, these are all good. Okay. Is, so is there a, I'm sorry if we've had this conversation before, but is there, Yuhui, with this metric, anything that can be drawn on from here that would help? Um, it's showing up the influence of the project. Uh, Oh no! It's showing two 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 influence points perspective. One is for people's influence. The other is for the uh, communities uh, or or communities influence or project influence. Yep. What I means 
is the organization's yep. gotcha. uh, influence in one community, not okay. not the the whole community's influence in the whole open source world or the, in the similar. Okay, let me, um, hopefully I didn't have an action item to take a look at this <laughs> from our last meeting. Let me, <laughs> I'm not even gonna look at our old minutes for fear that I might have had that action item. Um, let me let me take a look at this metric based on this conversation and see if there are components here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We may be able to pull into to this and then this could potentially become project influence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just a yep. the project itself. And I actually, I, I kind of prefer this title, organization or organizational activity, to which influence could be one thing that activity indicates. Yep. Okay. Okay, good. Um, somebody give me an action item on that. All right. Okay, we're out of time, but to take a second. Um, okay, um, I did just want to point out that yesterday I came across another tool. Yeah. I bring this up because PinCap is a Chinese company, and I'm wondering if you know some of the people who of are. Course. Of course, of course. It's, it's a small yeah. world, I'm guessing. When, when we when we pre prepare for the OSS Compass solution, we, we actually go deep in. Uh, into this website actually okay. it's also we, we we cannot say it's a it's a service but uh, you but uh, it's a provide similar function about um, you know we we type in some project's name or repo's name we can quickly go uh, get the result uh, of this uh, uh, sorry uh, repository's result yep. uh, there are some uh, good metrics I mean, similar like uh, chaos metrics directly, mm -hmm. but uh, <clears throat> what I can see that he wanna showing up uh, the uh, cap uh, capability of this pin type solutions using the you know the big data fetching from the, that's what it, it felt uh, like it was more a demonstration of that yeah then because you can they they tell you how to use in the uh, the different query language yeah oh uh, yeah yeah. DSL language to 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 quickly fetch out the, the result okay. of the fun metrics. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you knew about it. I just wanted to make sure that <laughs> yeah, anything I that, that I see, it doesn't bring it forward. Uh, yeah, their 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 front end design is quite good. Uh, I really like that. Okay. Okay. Right on. And I figured I figured you knew some of the people that were at these mm -hmm. these organizations. Yeah. Like because our... in our lunch out event uh, two three months ago, we also invite the people from the pink hype. Okay. So they also come up or submit. Okay. Right on. Mm -hmm. Um. And then just maybe one last thing, just for everybody, ChaosCon is today. It's, uh -huh. Yeah. So it's it's streamed live on, um the Linux Foundation platform registration is free. So the virtual registration is free and ChaosCon registration is also free. It's at, it's, uh, at one o'clock Vancouver time, 1 p.m. Vancouver, West Coast. So that's probably not a good time. For <laughs> I don't know yeah. <laughs> if I had to take a guess. Um, Do we have a record meeting? Re record for recorded. that? Yep, it's going to be recorded as well. Yeah, and that, that will be available. Be yeah. So I just wanted to let people know if you want to participate. And then uh, Elizabeth and I are going to be monitoring the Slack channel as well during during ChaosCon. So there might be some conversations in there on the ChaosCon channel. So that's it, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you all. See okay. you. Thanks for coming. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay.